My brothers and sisters, when I was an undergraduate student here at Our Lady's University, it was a thrilling experience to be able to serve Mass at this altar and to proclaim the readings here at Sacred Heart Church. That was before it became a glorious basilica. And I remember when I was a 19-year-old kid from Texas looking at this ambo and wondering in my heart if there would ever come a time when I would be able to be allowed to preach here from this pulpit or to preside at this altar. So to be celebrating the Mass here with you in this sacred place means a great deal to me personally. I'm very grateful to be here with you. A Notre Dame football weekend is an amazing experience, right? But even with a victory like last night, we are not in heaven. <laughs> we know that heaven will be infinitely better. And the readings in today's Mass invite us to ponder a bit about heaven. First of all, those Sadducees gave Jesus a great little puzzler. It goes like this. A woman is married, then her husband dies, then she remarries, and the second one dies, etc., etc. And by the time it's all said and done, she has married and buried seven husbands. And so in the resurrected life in heaven, whose wife will she be? That's a great question, right? Well, in Jesus' answer, he teaches us something about marriage and something about heaven. We know that marriage is a sacred, holy gift from God. But heaven is an entirely different level of existence. Heaven is so different from this life that people in heaven never marry nor are given in marriage. So why do we have marriage in the first place? What is marriage for? Marriage is for a twofold aim, for the good of the spouses and for the procreation of children. And since people live forever in heaven, there's no reason to reproduce there. In heaven, there's no need for the exclusive relationship of marriage because we will be living in the fullness of love for all people without the limitations of jealousy or competition or broken hearts. Of course, we will still know and love one another in heaven. In fact, we will understand one another more deeply and we will love one another more completely in heaven than we ever did here on earth. Our human relationships will not disappear or grow distant in heaven. They'll be glorified and transformed into something infinitely better. In heaven, there will be no more tears, no more disease, no more loneliness, no more insecurity, no more jealousy, no more suffering, no more blindness, no more bills to pay, and no more exams to take. That's pretty sweet. As human be beings made in the image and likeness of God, we are built for eternity and for union. And the kind of union that we will experience in heaven is beyond our wildest imagination. It will be an experience of total intimate communion with God and with others. St. Paul said, What no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor the human heart even conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. And from the perspective of our limited little human minds, we can't even begin to fathom it let alone describe it in words. Jesus teaches us that the afterlife is not simply a continuation of this life. It's not just the same old, same old for eternity. That would be kind of boring. 
Heaven will be an entirely new mode of existence beyond the limits of space or time. Think about the fact that the resurrected body of Jesus was transformed and glorified. Likewise, our resurrected body will also be transformed and glorified. Whatever is beautiful here on earth will be infinitely more beautiful in heaven. Whatever is joyful here in this life will be infinitely more joyful in heaven. And remember the refrain from today's responsorial psalm, which is printed in your little worship aids. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. That is the understanding that led St. Therese of Lisieux to have complete confidence when she faced the hour of her death at the age of 24. And she said, I'm not dying. I'm beginning to live. And St. Augustine of Hippo said that the great thought, the magna cogitatio, is eternity. So you and I today, here in this Mass, in this great basilica, need to ponder the great thought of eternity. Now, what I hope that you will do this week, after having participated in this liturgy here today, is think about heaven. If you will truly meditate on heaven, your perspective now, in this life, will change. So how will it change? I would suggest four ways. First of all, you will be more calm and less anxious at the thought of aging and death. And like the Maccabees in today's first reading, you will not be frantic in the face of adversity. And you will not fear even martyrdom. Thirdly, you will be stronger in resisting sin because you will see the connection between how we act here in this life and how we will spend eternity. Finally, your perspective will be changed by pondering heaven in the fact that you will keep the material things of this passing world in their proper perspective and you will not be overly attached to them. So let me conclude by saying that being here at Notre Dame with you in this weekend in this liturgy is like coming home for me. It brings back beautiful memories. But I know that our true home is in heaven. So as we pray this Mass in this Basilica here today with its great spire reaching up to heaven and with its beautiful Gothic arches pointing to heaven, and with the artwork on the ceiling reminding us of heaven, and as we receive the bread from heaven, let's think the great thought of eternal life in heaven, and let's allow that to change us today. <laughs>